Hello class. So in this lesson we're going to be looking at linear functions. Um, and in some case this will be a little bit of a review. Uh, the first objective is to write equations of linear functions given either points or slope information. This part should actually be a review from Algebra 1. We're also going to learn how to estimate lines of fit um, given pieces of data or to actually find the precise line of best fit. So let's start with writing uh, linear equations. And when we do that, there's three different ways we do it depending upon the information we're given. If we're given already slope information, and if we're given the y-intercept, uh, with you know, m and b, We'll use the, the straightforward method is to use slope-intercept form. y is equal to mx plus b. And let's just uh, quickly review, you know, we have our, our y-axis intercept right there. That would be our b, and we would have our slope m. So that would be slope-intercept form. If we know the slope and we only know the point. We don't know the y-intercept. We maybe know some other point on the line. In this case, we use what we call point-slope form. So we have y minus y1 uh, is equal to m times x minus x1, where here's our slope that we're given, and here is the point information that we're also given as well. So this would be a case where perhaps we have a point on the graph here, and all we know is x1, y1 information, and again, also we know the slope. So in that case, we use this form. The last case is when we have two points. We're not given the slope straight away, and in this case, the, the method is to just find the slope. Find slope using the, our, our slope equation. Um, and I use this uh, notation, delta y over delta x, as a way of saying the change in the y divided by the change in x. And after we found the slope, then we just go back and use the point-slope form using either one of these two points as our points, or you know, the values to fill in right here. So I have a couple of, of examples going forward to show a couple of these different types of forms. Uh, one other thing, notice this. This equation right here, if I were to divide both sides by x minus x1, this is what I get. m is equal to y minus y1 over x minus x1. And you know what? That just looks like our slope equation right there. So hopefully you see the connection between the slope definition here as well as the point-slope form. Uh, there's a subtle difference in that y and x in this case are variables, whereas in the slope equation these are actual coordinate points of, you know, one point and another point. Okay, let's go on. Uh, let's do an example where we write an equation given a graph. So the general method is to either find the slope and the y-intercept this is the easiest way if the slope intercept is is easily seen or find the slope and another point. So in this uh, graph here uh, we have a question that we're posed. How many seconds before the ball travels 17 feet? So we have on this axis time and on this axis feet and the ball travels um, um, farther and farther and farther uh, away according to you know how many seconds it travels. So let's start off by generating an equation. We're going to figure out the slope and this is nice. We have this convenient point right here on the y-axis. This is our y-intercept. It has the uh, point zero comma two. So I'm going to figure out my slope. Then I'm given the intercept here. The intercept is two. So now I have m and b, and so I'm going to use my slope-intercept form, y is equal to one-third x plus two, just plugging in the one-third here, plugging in the two right there. 
So now that I have my line equation, I can use that to solve this question. It says, how many seconds before the ball travels 17 feet? So now I'm going to plug in 17 feet for the value of y, because y here is my feet. I plug that in, and I'm going to solve here to find x, where x is time. So I'm going to go along here, solve, and I get 45 seconds. After 45 seconds all the way down here, the ball has traveled 17 feet. Okay. Let's look at another problem. And I'm going to step through, this is the word problem, and I'm going to step through it in kind of gory detail, just kind of procedurally. How do we tackle a word problem? Here we have Kelly and Kim, two different babysitters. Kelly has this sort of charging rate where there's a flat fee of $10 and then $6 every hour after that. And for Kim, we're just given a table. We're not given some sort of sentence here. Rather, we're given a table. We have some questions here to answer. Who charges more per hour? And how, much, how many hours must Kim and Kelly babysit before their fees are exactly the same? So let's start off by one, understanding the problem. There are actually two questions here. Let's take one question at a time. Who charges more per hour will be the first thing we tackle. So our plan will be to figure out what Kim's fee is, because we don't know what her fee is. Kelly's fee is given to us. It's $6 an hour. So now let's solve the problem. We notice here that Kim, if we were to calculate the slope, if we took this as one point and took this as another point, I have 26 minus 22, that's 4, divided by 2 over 1. So our slope would be 4. Another way to think about it is every time we increment by one hour, after every additional hour, the fee goes up by four dollars. So that tells us our Kim's rate, that tells us our slope, which is four dollars per hour. Therefore, Kelly charges more, because Kelly charges six dollars, Kim charges four dollars per hour. And as we look back to the problem, it looks kind of reasonable. We just double check that it makes some amount of sense. It wasn't something like twenty dollars an hour or something way, way off. Okay, let's look at the second uh, problem, uh, question now. How many hours must they uh, babysit before their fees are the same amount? Okay, so <clears throat> here we're going to generate um, two equations. Uh, we're going to generate um, basically a, f a function that calculates the fee as a function of hour. And then we're going to set both of those equations equal to each other. So let's start with Kelly. It says that Kelly charges a flat rate of $10 and $6 per hour from there. So I'm going to turn that into an equation. The fee of Kelly is $6 every hour. So that's our slope times the hour plus a flat rate or initial rate of $10. That's Kelly. I'm going to do the same thing. Um, I'm going to figure out Kim's rate or Kim's equation, sorry. And in this case, I know that the slope is 4. So that's 4h. Now I, I know, uh, I don't, I'm not given the intercept here, so what I could do, I could write over here, y is equal to mx plus b. y is equal to, and I know the slope in this case is 4, so mx plus b. And now I want to figure out what b is. So what I could do is plug in one of these sets of points, any one, but I'll just choose this one, into the equation. So 22 is equal to 4 times 1 plus b. b is equal to 18. So now I, I figure out my intercept, and now I have f is equal to 4h plus 18. That's Kim's cost equation or fee equation. Now I'm going to set these two equations equal to each other. Because at that time, the fees will be the same. And I go ahead and solve this, I get 4 hours. Now, let's look back and make sure it makes sense. So, um, 
for Kelly, we just plug it into this equation. After four hours, her charge will be $34. Now, for Kim, we could plug it back in, but it's even better because we're given a table here. Let's look at the table. At four hours, it's $34. This is an even better way than just plugging it back into the equation. And now we see that we got our, our answer good. Okay. Um, moving on, this is another concept where a lot of times, you know, in the previous example, these points here fell exactly on the line. But most of the time, when we gather scientific data, uh, we graph the data and it does not perfectly fall on the line. So what we want to do is what we call finding an estimate of the line of fit. So what we do here is we estimate. We do our best to draw a line through these given points, and really it is your own estimation. We try to make sure that uh, the line that we draw, there's kind of an equal number of points above and below that line. And then the next thing that we do is we choose, uh, we've drawn this line, and now we choose two points that are, I'll say, convenient on that line. And they, they don't necessarily have to be any one of these given data points. So here's an example. I'm actually choosing some points on the line that are not the original data points. And I am choosing them far enough apart. I don't want the two points to be so close together. Um, it, would, it would be kind of maybe more error prone if I chose one point here and another point here. I would say these points are too close together. It's better to choose them far apart. So now that I'm given two points, um, first thing I'm going to do is to calculate the equation, I'm going to calculate slope. So we have 6 over 3, that's our change in y, over our change in x, 9 minus 7 halves, and I get 6 elevenths. Then I'm going to use my point slope form, y minus one of the points, and in this case what I decided to do, I decided to use 9 and 6 as one of the, our coordinate points. So I do this, y minus 6, that's the y value here, slope times x minus 9, where the 9 comes from this point, place as well. Okay? So this is an example of how we estimate a line of best fit. Okay, and I, and I simplified it here. Last thing, um, this is the line of best fit, and this is where we're not estimating, we're actually using a calculator or a computer to give us the results here. And, and we call this a linear regression. Um, it calculates the line that is uh, theoretically closest to all of the data points. And along with this re linear regression, we get this number, uh, a correlation coefficient, and this number is a number that is always between negative 1 and 1, and it tells us how well does the line that was calculated in the linear regression, how well does it fit the data points. So here would be some examples of different sorts of data. And in one case, or the opposite two ends here, we have really strong correlation. It looks very much like a line in both of these cases. In these two cases in between, ah, kind of weaker, you do see some upward trend, some downward trend here, and in the middle case, nothing at all, no correlation whatsoever. We really don't see a line there at all. So we have a strong positive case because these are positive slopes. We have strong negative cases because these are negative slopes. And then our correlation value, um, this, this variable r, will be negative 1 when it's exactly on the line. Actually, this case here, these dots aren't exactly on the line. So this one might really be, I don't know, maybe negative um, 0 0.97 or something like this. And over here on this other side here, since these points aren't exactly on the line, this might be a positive 0 0.998 or something like that. If it's exactly, if all the dots fall exactly on the line, it'll be uh, uh, 1 or negative 1, depending on whether it's a negative slope or a positive slope. And then anything between 
uh, in the middle will have just some other value. You know, if it's strongly like this, um, it might, or, you know, no line that you can see here at all, it might have a R value of zero. Okay, we're going to learn in class how to actually use a calculator to punch this all out. So this is more like an introduction to understand the idea here, and then we'll do uh, this actually in class. Okay, that's it for today.